Alrighty hosses, welcome back and in this video I want to explain all about routing what it is and how we can use it on our website So the way that we can route is through the use of a decorator and I added a little comment right here And if you guys don't know what a decorator is whenever you have a function and you see an at symbol and then something after it this is a decorator it's basically a way that you can wrap up an existing python function and modify its behavior in some kind of way now with flask we use this to basically route or map a url to a return value so mapping routing tomato tomato what the heck does all this mean basically all we're doing with the complex terminology out of the way is we're connecting a url to the return value of a function. So whenever a user requests this URL, the response from the server is gonna be whatever this return value is right there. That's all we're doing. And just to show you guys one more example that's gonna make a lot more sense is let's say that we wanna make another page aside from the home page, and we'll just call it like a tuna or something. So we're right at app route and in here we'll just write tuna. So whenever the user goes to the page, and it's usually gonna be our URL, like the newboston.com slash tuna, what we wanna do is we just wanna make a function under here, and we can just return anything we want. Now remember, what we write in here is the return value. Does that mean that you can actually write HTML in here? Well, yes it does. So check this out. Let's just write um, like a heading two, and I'll write tuna is good. Heading to right there. So now let's just go ahead and run this. And let me pop this up. And all right. So there's our home page. And now let me go ahead and write tuna. So there you go. This is what we requested. Hey, server, give me the tuna page. And it said, okay, let me check what happens whenever you do that. Dun, dun, dun. Oh, look at this. You requested tuna. And I'm gonna run this function right under me and you're gonna get this response. So that's why we saw tuna is good in heading two. And there are better ways to actually include HTML. What we're gonna be doing eventually is making like an HTML template and then passing in whatever values we need. But it's gonna be, I don't know. It's not gonna make a lot of sense if I just try to explain it right now. So one last thing that I actually do wanna explain in this video is how we can use variables. So basically, let's say that we're setting up our web page right here, and we had like a profile section. So we had, I don't know, like user Bucky, or we could have user um, Emily, or we could have user Ava. Basically, we need part of this URL to be a variable. And depending on that variable, the content changes. So it might say, hello Bucky, hello Ava, depending on whatever we passed in right there. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna route and we'll just say um, uh, profile slash username. All right, so I'll write def profile. Now inside here, I'm just gonna write username. So basically anytime you wanna make a variable in your URL, what you need to do is you need to put it in between angle brackets. So username, and then we need to pass it in just like we we're passing in any old, you know, just a regular Python function, just pass in variable as a parameter, and then we can return whatever we want. Wow, cannot type. So return is of course, whatever displays on the screen, AKA the server's response. And I'll just write, hey there, uh, send us. And then this will be username right like that so basically from the url what we're essentially doing is just calling a function this function down here and we're going to pass in username for whatever's in the url so if they type in emily it's going to say hey there emily if they type in bucky it's going to say hey there bucky and let me make sure that i restart this and check it out so what i do profile and i'll write like a bucky and it says, hey there, Bucky. And let me bump this up so you guys can see it. Got a heading to run this, restart, bada bada bing, bada boom, bada bing. Check it out. All right. 
So it says, hey there, Bucky, and what if we were making um, Ava's profile? It would say, hey there, Ava. And we aren't just limited to text in, you know, writing out their name. We can do this with a bunch of different things. And we actually aren't even just limited to strings. We can use integers. And I'll show you guys how you can pass a list into your template or HTML. But uh, yeah, let me show you guys real quick how to use integers because there's a kind of weird thing that you need to look out for. So whenever you just want to use basic strings, letters, uh, like people's names and stuff like that, you can just do this. However, let's say that you're making um, like the stream, like the news feed, and you just want to single out a single post. Well, you identify a post by its ID number. So that's not a string, it's actually an int. So whenever you're just using strings, you don't need to write the data type, but whenever you use an int, you do. So we'll just name this post ID, or this could be like someone's age or employee ID number, whatever. And let me just write post right here. And remember, whatever the variable name is, that's the same one we want to pass into the function. So then I'll just write something like, uh, post ID is whatever post ID looking good and this doesn't actually have to be the same name you can actually write show post or whatever so now let me restart this and go to post and remember what our web server is expecting is an int an integer value so I'll just write like 23 whatever so post ID is 23 um you know 53 eight four five seven there you go so in this tutorial what did we learn we learned that you can make multiple web pages for your app or your website using routing pretty much tying together a url with a return value of a function and we also learned that you can use variables in your, your your URL. So anytime you just want to use a plain string, you don't need to do anything special. But anytime you want to use a different data type, then you actually need to specify it. Because by default, it just expects a string. If you give it something else, it might flip out. So there you go. Still a lot of stuff to cover. But hey, we're getting there. This is turning out to be you know a lot easier than I'm sure a lot of you guys probably thought. So I'm going to go eat my lasagna now, and uh, I'll see you guys in the next video.